Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. Today we are working through United Guardian Inc. Ticker UG. And in the next five minutes, I will go over both my valuation of this company and my assessment of its and my assessment of its business value. So let's dive right on in. This company came to us from a listener who recommended me check it out. So we'll see what we have here. Looks like it's in the personal products industry. And so they manufacture and market cosmetic ingredients, pharmaceuticals, medical lubricants, and specialty industrial projects. So it's a whole bunch of things here. Cosmetics include the Lubrigel line, moisturizing, lubricating gel, naturals, um, silicon oil, skin creams, cleansers, shower gels, shampoos. Um, pharmaceutical products include renacidin for urethral cath, bladder syndrome, um, so a whole bunch of things. But what's interesting to me is that the, these tend to be very high gross margin businesses. So we'll see if that plays out here in the data. Um, the beta is 0 0.0552. This is significant because if a beta of one means that you're going to have the same volatility as a stock in the S&P 500 index. Um, but a beta of 0 0.05 means that the volatility is going to be extremely low. There's probably very low share turnover here as well, which we see by 54%. So these two together make me think that this is a very overlooked company. So they're especially overlooked compared to many of the stocks I've looked at recently. But let's see what we can see from our return on invested capital data. Like I said, this is a good sign. I get excited when I see numbers like that. I also get excited when I look back at the last 20 years and they've never had a loss in the last 20 years. So 20 straight years of profitability is really exciting. That's a really strong sign. And it looks like the lowest return on invested capital occurred in 2002 with 14%. And the other low was 18% in 2016. So although that's not stable, you're basically always above 15% and you're definitely always in double digits and sometimes in the 20, 30, 40% range. So I really like what I see on return on invested capital. It looks like a strong business. The next thing that validates that is when I go to 10 year medium returns, we see returns on equity of 30%, return on invested capital of 33%. So they're probably not using debt. That's also a really good sign. Um, we see the high margins here, I was expecting, 60% gross margins, that's strong. PE ratio of 21 seems very reasonable considering the high quality business metrics we're hearing, seeing here, but my big concern is the 10 year Kager. One problem that you'll see as we dive into this, I think, is that regardless of how high quality the business is in terms of return on equity, high returns on capital don't matter if you're not growing. They only matter if you're growing. There's basically no difference between a return on equity of 6% and a return on equity of 30% if the company doesn't have any growth. Because what the returns on equity provide is if you have growth, you get high returns. But if you don't have growth, then basically all your returns come from just the dividends you can pay out. So that's where you're going to have a problem here. And so as we see here, it looks like revenue growth, I'm going to switch this over to thousands. So revenues are declining from 14 million at the beginning of the decade to around 11 million in 2020, maybe 20, you know, 13 million in 2019 is more accurate, but either way you have declining revenues, you have declining gross profits, um, declining operating profit and declining earnings per share. So all those things are a really bad sign that even though this looks like a high quality company, because it's slow growth or no growth or negative growth, the PE ratio is probably only worth paying seven, eight times earnings, six times earnings for a company because it's not growing. If it was growing, this would be an amazing business, but it's not growing. And so that's a big concern that I have. Your dividends per share is basically the entire return that you get from this business. So it's going to probably have a high dividend payout, assuming it's trading properly. So if you're only going to get a return from this business from the dividend, then you need the dividend to provide your entire return, which means if your dividend here is at 78 cents, then if I want a 10% return, I can only pay $7.80. So let's see what the price is. We see $19. So it's almost two times higher price than what I would need in order to get an attractive return on this investment. Um, let's see if they're buying back shares. So it looks like the share count has stayed the same over the last 10 years. That's a really good sign. I like that that's not changing. They don't need to buy back shares to be attractive. Um, if I had to guess, they're spending their cash on dividends, which is exactly what they're doing. 
is they're paying what looks like maybe a variable dividend based upon their cash flow for the year. I can get behind that. Balance sheet, do they have any debt? It looks like they have no long-term debt, so that's a good setup for this business. The PP&E has actually declined over time, which is attractive. It means they're spending less in terms of capital and maintaining this business. Um, so you like to see that. However, it's just this business is really struggling because they can't reinvest their capital, they can't grow. And so if the only thing you're gonna get is your dividend, that's okay. I like this business. This looks like a strong business, but if you're only going to get your dividend, then your dividend yield has to equal or exceed your return. And if the revenue is declining over time, then the dividend yield probably has to be higher than your return. So if you want a 10% rate of return, then your dividend yield needs to be 10, 11, 12% because your revenue is dropping at 2% a year. So for me, I like this United Guardian business here. It probably wouldn't be bought by me because it's kind of like a waterfall business where it's just paying off cash. Um, if I could buy the whole thing, that would be attractive to me, but I would want to buy the whole thing at like a dividend yield of 10%, 11%, 12%, and not a dividend yield of what looks like maybe 4%. So it, it seems very highly overpriced to me. Um, I'm unwilling to pay a PE of 21 for this company. I'm much more likely to pay a PE of like six or seven maybe eight. Um, and that could be attractive. So a PE of six to eight is where I think the value of this company should be. And gosh, they have nice returns, but it, they just without growth, these returns are worthless. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to get more great video content on investing.